What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast coming to you from fanboysanonymous.com. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and my target for this edition is going to be Ready Player One, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail and all the other kind of stuff like that. So, I went to see this movie a couple days ago. Normally, I do a Review Point right after seeing the movie, but I was out of town and I went to see it on a whim a little bit. So I have a little bit of time since I had seen the movie to be able to kind of um, process it a little bit more, I guess you could say. Uh, Still kind of the same format here. I'm going to talk about the things that I liked, the things that I didn't like, and do a little bit of just a stream of consciousness, whatever the hell pops up in my brain while I'm looking at the list of the cast and anything else that comes to my mind uh, when I'm thinking back on the movie. So first things first. Uh, If you want the spoiler-free review section of this, I will say very quickly that I liked the movie, I thought it was a lot of fun, and that I recommend people to go see it if they see the trailer for it and they think that it looks interesting. If you see it and it doesn't speak out to you, then I think that you should skip it, because I don't think that this is a type of movie that really necessarily has something for everybody. And I know that a lot of people are going to turn their nose up to it, and they're going to act like it's like just cheap, dumb popcorn flick type stuff. And it kind of is, a little bit. Uh, so that's kind of the scenario that I would bring with uh, with that. It's, it's not some Oscar-winning movie that I think we're going to be talking about for years to come as being like, man, this is something that's so groundbreaking as far as like the way that they handle characters or you know anything like that that's not going to be the case this is just fun and if you don't think that the trailers look fun you're not going to have fun with the movie so if you don't like that skip it if you do like it definitely see it because it was a lot of fun that out of the way let's get into the spoiler section for that so warning everything from now on will have potential spoilers if i decide to just throw it out there uh, you have been warned. So if you do not want to know what happens in the movie, bookmark this, go watch it uh, another time after you go see the movie, or maybe you don't care, and if you do, proceed with uh, with no caution, I guess, because if you don't care, then, you know, you don't need to have caution. So first things first, Steven Spielberg directed this movie, and I am not going to ever claim to be some Spielberg uh, historian or anything of the sort, haven't seen all of his movies. Like I, I've never seen the color purple. I've never seen Munich. Uh, I have not really the biggest affinity for jaws compared to a lot of other people. I think that the movie is great in some of the things that it does, but it's not a movie I actually enjoy watching. And you know, there's, there's some different things with Spielberg. I, I really love and some that I'm just not too fond of, you know, I really, really catch me if you can. And, um, you know, here and there, Jurassic Park, of course, is amazing. Uh, Close Encounters and E.T., eh, not so much. Uh, I'm not really too big on those. So this didn't feel like a Spielberg movie to me. It felt like just a generic comic book type of action movie, which is good and bad. Uh, I think that Spielberg has it in him to do something better than this. So I was a little bit disappointed in that. But that didn't mean that I disliked it. Uh, I will say... I didn't come out of the movie loving it as much as I was hoping that I would, but I also didn't go into this movie really expecting all that much. I never read the book, so I never had any kind of expectations of like what to specifically look for, and when I had seen the trailers for this, it was more so, yeah, it looks kind of fun, instead of like, oh man, I can't wait to see this movie, kind of like what I did with Kingsman or with, you know, like, Avengers Affinity War, it's like, I gotta fucking see that movie, I bought 16 tickets for my friends and I, uh, Ready Player One, just went to see it with my girlfriend, it was just kind of like, you know what, like, let's go out, let's go to the movies and just see that on Thursday night, so I didn't have a big investment with it, and it was more so just, let me movie pass it and see how fun it is, and it was fun, but the most fun part of it were just cameos and stuff, And when I left the movie, I felt happy and I felt positive, but over these past couple of days, I've realized how hollow it really is. This is a movie that I don't think lends itself 
to much criticism beyond the idea of just, did you have fun? That's all that matters. A lot of people are probably going to really, really love this movie, and it's going to get a lot of rewatch value for people that are checking out all the different Easter eggs and stuff, and that is awesome. And if you, if this is your favorite movie or something like that, power to you, that's cool. I'll probably watch it again, but I'm not going to be watching it again with as much love for it as I was thinking that I, I could have had. Uh, for instance, the plot is basic. And I kind of felt like this throughout the whole movie. Everything felt like it was a greatest hits album, but nothing original. Just a bunch of covers. Like, uh, for instance, Mark ha Mark Rylance, his character, uh, Halliday, he's Willy Wonka. There's nothing other than that he's Willy Wonka. He's not eccentric like Willy Wonka, but he's the Willy Wonka part. You know, it's, here is the, uh, quest, the keys to my kingdom are available to whoever can get it, and I'm a quirky kind of weird overlord of some kind of dominion. That's not anything new. Um, Simon Pegg playing a character of the business partner that was taken out of the mix because of questions, you know, whatever. I don't know, it kind of felt a little bit just like it was like social network in like a comic booky video gamey type of sense. Um you got the the main character who is a generic white dude in his twenties, dark hair. Uh he wants to save the world. He meets the girl. They have a my girlfriend was saying, uh, there's always the, the shoehorned in romance kind of a thing. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's very, very basic. And you've got the, the best friends that are all like quirky and you've got the over the top, evil, maniacal businessman type of 40 to 50 something year old dude who is just out there for the money and that's it. And then you've got these passionate people who are like, no, it's the art, man. That's the real thing and all that. So, I mean, I got a feeling this is a type of movie that a lot of people are really, 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 really going to love. And I don't want this to sound so condescending, but I think a lot of people that are going to really love this movie like simple things. And maybe they can't necessarily process things that are too crazy on, like, the intellectual side. That's not to say, of course, that you can't appreciate something like that. And also things that are deeper, because that's the case. You can certainly do that. You can certainly be somebody who's watching a Terrence Malick film and going all crazy about that, which I find boring as shit, by the way. And then you turn around and you watch Dumb and Dumber. You know, you can do that kind of stuff. But I got a feeling that a lot of people are going to really, really love Ready Player One because they just shut their brain off and that's all that that matters. Um, a lot of video game people are really going to like this movie, I think, too, because it speaks to a lot of gamer type stuff. I'm not a gamer, so I missed out on a little bit of that. But I did love the pop culture references. And again, I mentioned that I think that this is kind of a best hits cover sort of a thing. It sort of felt like to me that the majority of the fun was just going, oh, there's King Kong. Oh, there's the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. Whoa, look at that. There's Freddy Krueger and the Ninja Turtles and Batman and Harley Quinn and uh, Goro and the chestburster from Alien. And, you know, and after a while, I got a little bit tired of it because it was just sort of like, look at that. It's Iron Giant. Look at that. It's whatever. And I was like, can you tell me this story a little bit more? Can you give me a little bit more of a, a story other than we need to do this quest to get this? We need to do this quest to get this, and then we need to do this quest to do that. I thought it was funny, by the way, um, one of my misses would be uh, Olivia Cook's character. She is Artemis in the movie. And when you see her in the real world, she had given us a little bit of a thing ahead of time saying, like, don't be thinking too highly of her that you're going to be disappointed with what she really looks like and of course she's like hot and has a birthmark around her eye and wade the main character parzival is just sort of like nah i don't care about the birthmark you're still fucking hot and i thought that, that was really kind of weird i did like the twist that h was helen and that they had set up a little thing ahead of time where she was like you know you you got this uh crush on this girl and she might be some dude named chuck and whatever 
And it turns out that that guy is actually Helen. I liked that. I thought that was kind of fun. I liked the little twist that uh, the one other character, I can't remember the character's name off the top of my head, but that it's just this like 11 year old kid. I thought that was pretty funny. TJ Miller's character, I Rock, I thought that that was great. He reminded me of a lot of different gamers that I have come across over my very, very limited amount of time of gaming and my experiences watching other people with gaming and different things like that. But his character was fun. Um, ben Mendelsohn is a great villain. Pretty much any time that they give him this kind of a, a role, he sort of just plays that part extremely well. And I like the Mark Rylands playing that kind of dorky, weird maybe on the spectrum side of, uh, you know, the whole James Halliday thing. I like that. Um, I didn't like Ty Sheridan as Parzival or Wade Watts bland. Uh, that's a miss. He could have been replaced by almost anybody. You could have had like a Liam Hemsworth. If he was younger, you could have had, I mean, really like take your pick. It, it could be a no name. It just, didn't matter. He did nothing that was standing out to me whatsoever. And the special effects were cool, but the special effects were also computerized, so they got away with a lot of different things because it didn't need to look realistic, so I think that that's a little bit of a cop-out, sort of. And I wouldn't mind if it got nominated for Best Visual Effects next year at the Oscars, but I kind of hope it doesn't win. The music was a lot of fun. Pretty much any time that they had any kind of song, people in the audience were just kind of like, oh, sweet, I like this song. So I like that. And the action was fun too. Um, again, it was all fake for the most part, so it lost a little bit of its kind of pizzazz and uh, the weight behind it. No gravitas when I know that the characters can just come back, that kind of a thing. But bottom line, this movie was something that I did enjoy. And I think that it's not going to be some maybe on like my best of kind of list at the end of the year. Uh, when I do the Fanboys Film Awards at the end of the year, I don't think I'm going to give this really pretty much any like positive praise in comparison to some other movies that are coming out. Uh, like I like Black Panther a lot more than this, but I've, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see some movies this year that I don't like as much. And I, there's a lot that I haven't gotten a chance to watch yet. Like, I haven't seen Tomb Raider, but I haven't heard anybody talking about Tomb Raider. And really, I haven't heard anybody talking about Ready Player One either, for that matter, right now, over a couple of days, and that's not necessarily a good sign, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I think that this was something that you should go see if you're of that pop culture spectrum, and if you do enjoy movies that are of that popcorn flick type of variety, but it's not a necessity, and if it's not your thing... Well, you've already listened to a dozen minutes of me talking about it, and you should know by now whether it's not your thing. Uh, I would say see it, and that it is a hit more than it is a miss, but it's a very minor hit, and it's not something that I would recommend to everybody, and it's not something that I really am itching to necessarily watch a second time yet, but I'm sure that I will. So, with that in mind, tell me what you guys thought about this in the comments section below. What did you like? What did you dislike? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Whatever the case may be on that kind of a thing. You know, are you somebody who thinks that the whole idea of this futuristic thing where the real world is garbage and everybody lives in a video game seems a little bit too unrealistic? Or do you like that kind of aspect? Or do you just shut your brain off and say, just fuck it, dude. Laugh at the idea that you've got all these uh, DeLoreans and, and shit like that. I don't know. Drop those comments below, whatever you think. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already, and check off the notifications with the bell. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and keep checking out fanboysanonymous.com for anything else coming your way. Six Flicks Picks is coming up. I already have that scheduled, and I really got to set back and watch Suicide Squad Hell to Pay. Probably just going to post something on the website about that. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something on the video side, but we'll see. And I'll see you when I see you, everybody. Thanks for listening to this. It's time for me to geek out. Adios.